One of the coasters that simply does not get enough credit in our industry is Bandit over in Japan. This is a Togo and it single-handedly inspired Magnum XL200 at Cedar Point, which is the coaster credited for kicking off the coaster wars. And it's all because of this ride. I had the opportunity to go visit Yomira Land and go and check this thing out. And let me just say, I can totally understand how someone could go ride that thing and say, wow, I want one of those at Cedar Point. This is a good ride. It's tall, it's fast, it's a long ride, and at the time it was created, it was pretty revolutionary. Sure, maybe nowadays it doesn't compare to some of the newest, latest, and greatest creations out there, but back then the technology didn't exist to do what coasters are doing nowadays. So what they were really able to accomplish back then to create this ride is quite remarkable. This ride uses the terrain so well. Look at the height, 167 feet, Elevation, 256 feet. Now those stats come from RCDB. I'm not 100% sure what he means when he says elevation. My guess is that he means that that is the difference between the top of the lift hill and the bottom of the first drop. But don't quote me on that. It would, however, not surprise me because this is 100% a terrain coaster. It goes so far out there, buried in the trees, you can't even see most of it from the park. That's why a lot of the footage that you're seeing is from the sky ride because the sky ride that takes you to the front entrance of the park goes through Bandit's turnaround. So it's already a huge spectacle. But let's talk about the experience. Now I know Togo generally has a pretty bad reputation, at least here in America, and the number one complaint is that they are rough. Is Bandit a rough ride? Absolutely not. This is an extremely smooth coaster. And what I mean by that is in the way that the wheels hug the track, there's no rattling, there's no shuffling, no vibration, whatever you want to call it. It is glass smooth, which for a coaster this old, that is very impressive. There's like one jarring transition during the ride, but most of the other transitions are fine. A lot of them are very drawn out. This coaster is not really snappy by any means. Everything takes up a large amount of space. That's why when you look at that drop, not very steep. And I think this is one of those coasters that, yeah, if this ride were rough, it would definitely take away from the experience. But luckily it's not, it's as smooth as can be. The irony is, this coaster is smoother than Magnum, which was built after it. So props to Yomirland for maintaining this coaster well. If there is a downside to this ride, it is 100% the trains. Oh my gosh, these trains are so bad. Mainly because they are not cushioned. You are sitting on hard plastic. These vehicles are not comfortable at all. The seat sucks, the back of the car is really tight, it's pressed up against you. And might I add, it's not really male friendly. There's this little piece that protrudes in between your legs. That if you're scooting around, yeah, not exactly ideal. I think the main issue is that the entire seat is just kind of a square shape. And to call it a seat is kind of generous. It's like you're sitting in a tub. It's just a very small train. And so I think this ride would really benefit from updated vehicles. But anyways, kind of looking past the vehicles, getting into the layout. One of the first main impressions that you get of this ride is when you get over the top of that lift hill. You're on that little flat section. Let me just say, this view is amazing. You can see off into parts of Tokyo. You can see all the green lush landscape. It's a fantastic view. And then that sends you down the drop. If you are sitting anywhere other than the back row, do not expect any airtime. And if you are sitting in the back, you can expect maybe a little, but not a lot. There are some airtime moments on this ride. I'd say there's three main sections here, but it's floater airtime. And all of that is definitely best experience in the backs, which is why I recommend the back seat. So yeah, maybe a little airtime going over that drop. You pop up into a turnaround. And when you come down from that, you actually go into a helix and you pull about three Gs going around this thing. It's a double helix and yeah, three Gs, you know, it's forceful. By far the most forceful moment on this ride. I don't know if I'd say it's the best moment. I actually really like like when it goes off into the woods and through the valleys and hills. Just the fact that you're flying at 68 miles per hour through this beautiful landscape, you can't see anything else. That's a pretty cool feeling. Most of the rest of the ride is gradual hills. It'll take you up, it'll take you back down, but that's okay. You know, I would say that this ride, it's not mind blowing, but it is fun. Like it's an enjoyable coaster. I got about four rides on it and I enjoyed it each time. You know, the more I rode it, I think the more I enjoyed the experience. I think this ride alone makes visiting Yomirland worth it. So do I rank it particularly high for me? 
No, I don't think so, but I'm glad I got a chance to write it, and I thought it did what it did pretty well. So for its final score, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Yes, I am deducting a full 3 points because the trains are that bad. But anyways, I want to hear from you guys what you think of this ride, if you've had the opportunity to experience it, if it is on your list of rides that you eventually want to do. And of course, make sure to stay tuned for more Coaster Reviews here at Coaster Studios, and I'll see you guys next time.